All right, in this video we're looking at the effect of structure on the strength of acids for AP chemistry. Um, we know that an acid is a substance which, when placed in water, ionize, ionizes because water molecules are taking away acidic hydrogen atoms from the, from the acid molecule. The hydrogen ions bond with water, producing hydronium cations. The acidic hydrogen ion atoms are those that are involved in polar bonds within the acid, and they carry positive partial charges. For example, if you take an acetic acid molecule, two carbons, one of them has three hydrogens attached like this, the other carbon has double bond oxygen, and then OH. So this is the carboxylic acid group from organic chemistry. Within this molecule, there's four hydrogen atoms, but only the hydrogen atom over here, bonded to oxygen, is considered acidic. These three hydrogens here are not acidic. Now, why is that? We know from earlier in the course that the carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar. They're nonpolar because the difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is so small that the electrons are shared equally. So these three bonds are all nonpolar. Therefore, the hydrogen atoms and the carbon atom there, none of them carry any kind of partial charge. They're all essentially neutral atoms. Over here, though, we have an OH bond. And oxygen, we know, is one of the top four electronegative elements on the periodic table. So oxygen takes these electrons in the shared bond and pulls them towards itself giving the oxygen a partial negative charge and the hydrogen a partial positive charge. That means this bond is polar. Now, because this hydrogen now carries a partial positive charge, if placed in water, water molecules, which are also polar, with the oxygen in the water being partially negative, they're going to be attracted to that hydrogen. Here's another water molecule as well. They surround the acid, and the oxygens are going to start being attracted to that hydrogen ion, hy hydrogen atom rather, in the acid. And what may happen is that the water molecules may successfully pull this hydrogen away, creating a hydronium ion, H3O positive, and leaving behind the acetate ion, the conjugate base. So only hydrogen atoms that are involved in polar bonds are going to be acidic within the molecule. Now, a strong acid, we know, is one that ionizes completely in water. So therefore, essentially, every molecule of strong acid has lost its acidic hydrogen atoms to water. Weak acids do not ionize completely. Um, within a solution of weak acid, a very large percentage of the weak acid molecules are going to be floating around in the water, not ionized. Three different factors determine the relative strength of acids. One of them is the strength of the bond that carries the hydrogen atom, so the strength of the bond involving the acidic hydrogen atom. The polarity of that bond also determines the strength. And then the third factor, which is a little bit beyond AP chemistry, at least at this point in the course, the stability of the conjugate base that's formed as a result of losing your hydrogen atom. So we're not going to really focus on that third factor. We know that the, um, we know Coulomb's law uh, expresses the uh, force of attraction between charged particles. And so Coulomb's law says that the force is proportional to the charges involved, Q1 and Q2, and is inversely proportional to the distance between those charges. So the force of attraction or repulsion between charged particles depends on the two charges involved and on the distance between them. When the charges are greater, the force is greater. When the distance is greater, the force is weaker. Now, in a chemical bond, the nucleus of one atom is attracted to the shared electrons. The nucleus of the other atom is, is attracted to the shared electrons as well. Now, if the distance between the nucleus and those shared electrons gets larger, then the force of attraction will get smaller. The bond will get weaker. So the greater the distance um, between the nucleus and those shared electrons, the weaker will be the, the bond involved. 
So Coulomb's law can help us estimate the strength of a bond. Now when you're looking within a period on the periodic table, so within a row on the periodic table, we know that the atomic radii decrease, we learned that earlier, but they don't decrease dramatically fast. They, they decrease because there's more protons in the nucleus, the valence electrons are within the same energy level, and the, the greater nuclear charge basically pulls the electron cloud closer to the nucleus. So the atomic radii decrease, but not dramatically. So therefore, within a period, the relative strength of the acid depends more on the bond polarity than on the bond strength. Okay, the strength of the bond will be determined um, by the sizes of the atoms involved. That's where Coulomb's law comes in. The larger the atoms, the greater the distances involved, and therefore the weaker the bonds. But within a period, the atomic radii are not changing dramatically. So here we're going to focus on the polarity of the bonds involved. For example, in period number two, if you look on the far right of the periodic table, you can, you can see three different molecules, um, nitrogen with hydrogens attached, so ammonia, oxygen with hydrogens attached, so water, and fluorine with hydrogens attached, so hydrofluoric acid. So those are three possibly acidic substances involving nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine within period two on the right-hand side of the periodic table. Now within those three molecules, the strength of the acids increase like this. Ammonia, we know, is, is actually usually considered a base. It's the most common weak base. Um, it, theoretically, it, it can donate a hydrogen, but its Ka value is so small, it's essentially, it doesn't do that, in, at least in aqueous solution. So ammonia has such a tiny Ka value, it's, it's essentially not an acid. Water um, has a Ka value, which we usually call Kw. It can donate hydrogen ions and, and form hydronium. The Kw is around 10 to the minus 14, so it's not a very strong acid. HF is also a weak acid, but its Ka value is around 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. So the strength of the acid increases okay, the strength increases as you go across. And you'll see the same pattern in period 3, period 4, so phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. When they have hydrogens attached, the strength of acids increase as you go across the period. Now, why is that? Well, the bond strengths, we'll assume, are, are, are roughly, are, are not changing dramatically. So, But what is changing is the um, polarity of the bonds, the NH bond. In the, compared to the OH bond, compared to the HF bond, the polarity is increasing. As the polarity increases, the hydrogen gets a greater and greater positive charge. With more positive charge, the water molecules are, are more and more able to take away hydrogen atoms. So when you look at HF, this bond is much more polar than an NH bond. Therefore, this hydrogen in HF has a greater positive charge than the hydrogens in ammonia. So water is more strongly attracted to these hydrogens, and therefore these hydrogens get donated more easily. HF is a stronger acid than ammonia. So within a period, you look at the, the increasing polarity of the bonds, which creates increasing acid strength. Within a group on the periodic table, going down a group, the radii are increasing now dramatically. So as you go down the group, the, the size of a fluorine atom is much smaller than a chlorine, which is much smaller than bromine, which is much smaller than iodine. We know that's because the valence electrons are found in higher and higher energy levels. Now as a result of that increasing radius, if you think of a hydrogen atom bonded to a fluorine atom, and compare that to the hydrogen atom bonded to the iodine atom, okay, much larger iodine atom, the distance between the two nuclei here is much smaller than this distance, therefore the HF bond is much stronger than the HI bond. Okay, so the bond strength decreases as you go down that family, and that's because of the increasing atomic radius, and again, Coulomb's law. The 
greater the distance um, between the nucleus and the, and the valence electrons, the weaker will be the, the bond. Now, as you go down the family then, we expect the bonds to get weaker. If the bonds are getting weaker, the water molecules will more easily take away hydrogen atoms. These hydrogens in HI are more easily donated to water than the, a the hydrogens in HF because this bond is much weaker, it's, it's e more easily broken. So therefore, the acid strength increases as you go down the family. So within a group, acid strength increases going down, and that's because of decreasing bond strength. Okay. Now, a couple other situations related to acid structure, and that involves um, having looking at a series of acids where what you're doing is you're adding to an atom in the acid here, we're adding to oxygen, chlorine atoms. Uh, sorry, we're adding to the chlorine atom, oxygen atoms. So we've got here um, CLOH or HOCl is another way to look at that acid. Over here we have HClO2, um, here we have HClO3, and here we have HClO4. In these acids, the H is actually bonded to oxygen atoms, as you can see. Now, what is the effect of having more and more oxygens in the acids? Well, in this acid here, HOCl, the chlorine atom has only this oxygen with the hydrogen attached. The second acid, chlorine, now has another oxygen atom attached. This chlorine has two other oxygens. This chlorine has three other oxygens. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, we know that oxygens are highly electronegative. So when you start adding more and more oxygens like this, the more and more electronegative oxygens are going to pull the electron density. They're going to pull the electron cloud in within this molecule more and more to the left in these pictures. So the arrows are showing electron density being pulled more and more towards the chlorine atom because of the increasing number of electronegative oxygen atoms there. Remember, electronegative means you attract electrons. Now, what's the significance of the electron cloud being pulled more and more towards the chlorine? Well, the significance of that is that the polarity of the OH bond is going to increase as a result. So when the electron density gets pulled to the left, you have here a small positive charge on this hydrogen here. But when the electron density is pulled really far to the left here because of all these oxygens, this hydrogen has a much greater positive charge. So now the bond is more polar, therefore this hydrogen is more attractive to water molecules, and therefore this acid is much stronger than the acid at the top. So the addition of, ox of electronegative oxygen atoms causes the polarity of the OH bonds to increase, and that causes the acid strength to increase as well. You can see the same kind of effect when you compare acetic acid, ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, to a related acid, trichloroacetic acid. So the three H's have been replaced with three chlorine atoms. We know that the CH bonds are nonpolar, but CCl bonds are going to be polar. These chlorine atoms are not as electronegative as oxygen, but they're still one of the top four electronegative elements on the periodic table. So again, all of these chlorine atoms are going to pull the electron density away from the acidic hydrogen this way within the molecule, and that's going to increase the polarity of the OH bond. So within acetic acid, the Hydrogen has a positive charge because of the polar OH bond. But in trichloroacetic acid, the hydrogen has a much greater positive charge because this bond is even more polar because all these electronegative chlorine atoms pull electron density away from the OH bond. So the electronegative chlorine atoms are doing the same thing that the electronegative oxygen atoms did up here. They're increasing the polarity of the OH bond which increases the strength of the acid. So trichloroacetic acid is a much stronger acid than acetic acid. So that we've got it, some of the factors related to structure within acids as they influence the strength of acids.